The Arkham games are easily some of the best superhero video games ever released, and you wouldn't be wrong to say that one of them is the best. With three mainline titles, one awkward prequel, and a handful of mini spin-offs, these games know how to truly make you feel like the Batman. While Arkham Asylum and Arkham City have been considered flawless by countless fans, the final game in the original Rocksteady trilogy, Arkham Knight, is a bit of a hot topic. Some people believe it is the best in the series, while others despise its existence. But why? What makes Arkham Knight so divisive? First, let's discuss the things that the game does really well. First off is presentation. The game released in 2015, and even now in 2022, I think this game looks 10 times better than any game that's released nowadays. Rocksteady really took advantage of not only the series' art style, but also the powers of the next-gen hardware to deliver a beautiful experience. The updated character designs are very well done, and even the alternate costumes for Batman look like they fit into this world seamlessly, as opposed to Arkham Cities, which, in my opinion, stand out from the rest of the world. Gotham City is illuminated almost strictly by streetlights and neon signs. Constant rain sets the atmosphere of the game perfectly. Every frame of this game looks like a painting. But presentation goes beyond graphics though. This game immerses you into the boots of the Dark Knight perfectly. The lack of loading screens when you're moving from area to area makes you feel like you're acting out a movie or even a Batman comic, and it never removes you from the experience. The random acts of crime around the city make Gotham feel alive and only cement your status as the ultimate crime fighter further. The voice acting is just firing on all cylinders for this game, with each character feeling real and exactly how you picture them. And, ah oh hell, I have to talk about the Joker. The Joker, despite being dead at the end of Arkham City, makes his return in Arkham Knight. The blood he transfused into Batman during the previous game causes him to appear as a hallucination along the journey. He unexpectedly appears to give his thoughts on the current situation, and even the things he says acts as tips to lead you in the right direction. The Joker seamlessly appears into random areas, with the player unable to catch him loading in, even when the game isn't going through a cutscene. The Joker slowly tries to take over Batman's mind, evidenced by his face appearing on random billboards, or his skin slowly clearing over the course of the game, representative of how much space he takes up in Batman's head. Aside from presentation and the ways that the game immerses you being totally awesome, the gameplay is a lot of fun. Some would argue that combat in this game is the best in the series, not only introducing new tools to take out your opponents, but adding more enemy types to keep track of during encounters. You have to make on-the-fly decisions and monitor each enemy carefully to make sure that the medic isn't reviving somebody or a big guy isn't about to slam you into the wall. But you'll have to use every tool in Batman's arsenal to survive, as well as every move and counter-attack you know. Personally, I'm not a fan of the complexity, but at the same time, it is damn well rewarding when you take out a whole group of enemies that put you to the test for minutes on end. Some of the puzzles and stealth sections are a lot of fun. The puzzles express Batman's superior intellect in more ways than just detective work, and the areas that the stealth sections take place in are really big and present a lot of room for you to develop your own strategies that might be completely different from how another player tackled the situation. Both of these elements are just as important to player satisfaction as everything else I've discussed already. All of this combined, the graphics, the immersion, the gameplay, they're all valid reasons as to why people adore this game. However, there are certain things about this game that people absolutely despise it for. If you enjoy video essays like this and you want to see more, then consider subscribing. Over half the people that watch my videos don't subscribe, and I put one out every Tuesday and Saturday, so consider subscribing. We're actually on the road to 100 subscribers, so what better time to join the community than now? Anyways, let's get back to the video. First off is the story. The story features a lot of moving parts that leave it feeling very bloated. We got Scarecrow's plot, the mystery of the Arkham Knight, the multiple Jokers, and that's just the main questline. There's plenty of extra tasks to accomplish, but I'll get to that in a second. Each time the story switches to a new story arc, I guess, I feel like I'm playing a completely different game. Each of these arcs cut into one another. For example, you'll be full steam ahead on the Scarecrow train, just to have the story halted to focus on the other people infected with Joker's blood. It rips you right out of the experience every single time. On top of that, the writing is just, eh. Uh, it's not terrible, but viewing from an objective perspective, it could use a little work. I think the main thing that comes to mind for me is the identity of the Arkham Knight. The game tries to hint at who it is, but instead of being subtle, it kind of just gives it away, making the big reveal fall flat on its face. A lot of people are upset with the game's ending, too. Some people are upset with the how it was written, but more people are fine with it, they're just upset on how to unlock it. By beating the main story, you see a cutscene where Bruce Wayne, who is revealed to be Batman, walks into his mansion, and it explodes, leaving everyone to think that he's dead. 
Then you're greeted by a little message on the bottom of the screen. Apprehend all of Gotham's most wanted to complete the... What the fuck? So yeah, if you want the full canonical ending to this game, you have to apprehend all of Gotham's most wanted, which basically means you have to 100% complete the game. Not only do you have to do every side quest in the game, but this becomes extra difficult when the Riddler's side quest becomes unbeatable until you find all 243 Riddler trophies scattered across Gotham. The worst part is, the extra 30 seconds of cutscene that you get to see is really important, and it's even referenced in DLC by random enemy radio chatter. This pissed off a lot of people, including myself. Alright, now it's time to discuss the biggest flaw that the game faces. The Batmobile. This is the first Arkham game that lets you drive the Batmobile, and your first impressions are probably, Wow, this handles really well. Huh, it has a tank mode? This is awesome! Let me tell you, you won't be saying that 7 hours into the game. Arkham Knight forces you to use the Batmobile on certain sections, most of it being vehicular combat sections. You'll have to use the tank mode to take down robot artillery in order to progress through certain sections. That's not always the case though, as the game will even force you to use the Batmobile in on-foot sections to drive up a wall or charge an electrical system. Even the Riddler challenges are all done with the Batmobile. It starts off being a lot of fun, but it ends up becoming very tedious and very annoying towards the end of the game. Batman Arkham Knight is by no means a bad game. It's a game made with passion, and it stays true to its core values. But due to a few disappointing new features, the game truly split its fanbase apart, rather than being considered masterpieces like its predecessors. 